Hey everyone, Tiago here with PC World. Today, we're going to be taking a look at the X570 Hero from Asus. We're also going to talk about the Dark Hero. What are some differences? This motherboard has been on the market for a while, but if you're looking at a Ryzen 5000 or even older 3000 CPU, is it still worth it in 2022? We're going to take a look at the specs. We're going to take a look at some of the performance attributes of this motherboard. That way, you can best decide if this is going to be a good value proposition for your motherboard choice. So first, let's go over some general information on the X570 Hero. This is going to be part of the Republic of Gamers, or ROG, ROG for short. This is going to be the entry into the higher-end Asus motherboards. This is going to be before you get to things like the Formula, Apex, Extreme. The Hero promises to be high-end without the extremely high-end price and giving you pretty much the majority of features that you're going to have on those higher-end motherboards. And of course, when choosing a motherboard, features and, as you could call it the spec list are going to be very important that's going to be one of the primary reasons that you would go from something like this to maybe something a little cheaper or something a little bit more expensive so first let's go over some of the main features and specs that may interest you in the motherboard like this first it's going to support ryzen 5000 and ryzen 3000 cpus this motherboard will pretty easily handle even something like what i have in here right now and that's going to be the 16 core ryzen 5950x other important features will include pc PCIe Generation 4. Now, as it pertains to the GPU, Generation 4 really not that big of a difference as opposed to being limited to just PCIe Generation 3. Maybe in some use cases, if you have like a 3090, maybe doing some professional workloads, you may notice a difference. But at the current time, the difference between 3 and 4, really nothing that you should worry about. And yes, PCIe Generation 5 is out on the current crop of Intel motherboards from Alder Lake, but it's really not that big of a difference when it comes to the GPU. Where you will notice more of a difference for PCIe Generation 4, however, is when you're actually trying to saturate those PCIe lanes primarily with NVMe drive. Generation 4, depending on the drive that you have, should be significantly faster than a Generation 3 drive. If you can actually feel that in real-world performance without benchmarks, that's really going to be up to the individual user. But if you're transferring files in between drives, maybe you have other internal drives that are equally as fast. Otherwise, it's not really a big deal. Something that may be a positive positive or perhaps a negative if you want to future proof the x570 hero will have ddr4 and as opposed to ddr5 that's recently come out on the newer motherboards such as the z690 from intel ddr4 is going to be a lot easier to find it's going to be a lot cheaper in pretty much every single case and it's also much more mature working with various different motherboards now ddr5 is the new standard but it's going to be much more expensive on average and at least with the early kits the amount of performance that you get versus the previous generation really isn't anything particularly too impressive. It's pretty much like PCIe Generation 5. On the networking side, things to keep in mind, there is a Wi-Fi version and a non-Wi-Fi version of this board. If you do get the Wi-Fi version, it's going to be Wi-Fi 6. And of course, you are going to get 2.5 and 1 gigabit LAN. Now, you're not going to get 10 gigabit LAN on a board like this. That's why the pricing tier goes the way that it goes. After all, that's how really these boards are segmented really by these more expensive features. Now, one of my favorite features on motherboards, especially when they start to get higher end and above, that's going to be having a dual BIOS with a BIOS button on the back, as well as clear CMOS on the back. This makes things much easier in case you have an issue with your BIOS and you need to reset it, you need to try something else. Maybe you were overclocking and something went wrong or something with a driver or update, and it's one of the differentiators between a higher end motherboard and something that's going to cost a little cheaper. Another feature that I find really useful is having a start button on the motherboard or the power button. Now, this is going to be very handy when you're initially building your computer, even if you have it on a test bench. I always tell people, test your hardware before you put it in the case. It'll be a lot easier to diagnose if something is wrong or maybe something is shorting. If you have it outside of the case, it might be harder to connect the power button to it from your case. So having access to a physical start button makes things much easier in case you ever need it. In terms of connectivity in the back, of course, if you have the Wi-Fi version, you're going to have your Wi-Fi 
Wi-Fi antenna. USB connectivity is actually pretty amazing on this motherboard. You're gonna have around 12 in the back. One of them is gonna be a Type-C USB-C. I've seen some high-end motherboards that don't even have this many, so that's certainly very impressive. Now, it is gonna be missing Thunderbolt 3 or Thunderbolt 4. You're gonna wanna go to a higher-end Intel board or very select X570 motherboards do offer Thunderbolt, but those generally are gonna be considerably more expensive and just a higher tier. That's gonna be one of the differentiators, once again, from those and the motherboard like this. Audio connectivity for the motherboard is also fully featured. You're gonna have access to all the ports in the back. For storage drive support, you're gonna get two M.2 slots as well as eight SATA ports. Now, many more modern motherboards do have a considerable more amount of M.2 ports. Only having two M.2 slots may be frustrating for some who wanna have this as a workstation motherboard, but typically for gaming, it should be more than enough, especially with having eight different SATA ports for traditional SSDs. So what's the main difference between the X570 Hero and the X570 Dark Hero? Well, there aren't too many. Of course, the aesthetics and the actual design is going to be different. And one of the main differences, the Dark Hero is not going to have a chipset fan. Some people complain that this fan is a little bit too loud on most X570 models. So the newer ones try to remove those fans while try to keep VRM temperatures around the same. And the Dark Hero successfully does that. No fan at all in sight. Now, the only other important upgrade to mention, it's going to have about a 90 amp power delivery instead of 60 amp on the regular X570 Hero. It shouldn't really make that big of a difference, even for like a 5950X, but depending on how far you want to take your overclock, then I think you may actually notice a difference. Let's talk about the value proposition, realistically, put it into context with what's going on in the market. Now, this motherboard originally was around $379, and you're going to find the Dark Hero variant maybe for $400. $449. On average, it's going to be around that difference. If you can find them for a similar price, of course, you may want to step up to the Dark Hero, which is just going to have better power stages, no chipset fans. It's going to be, you know, slightly a newer version of the X570 Hero if you can get it for a reasonable price differential. And especially if you're going to be using the Ryzen 9, like a 5900X or a 5950X, that slight increase in power delivery could allow you to perhaps overclock a little bit better. But if you're going to be using anything else and you don't want to spend the extra money on the Dark Hero, there really isn't a major difference, especially if you're going to be going with maybe a Ryzen 7 and below. X570 Hero is going to be able to handle that without any problems. It will also handle the Ryzen 9, of course. You just get a little bit more oomph out of the Dark Hero version. And as far as the chipset fan is concerned, I mean, it is a good idea not having a chipset fan for noise reasons, but with various BIOS updates, you're now going to be able to control the fan on the X570 Hero. You should be able to keep it where it's not going to be too audible, especially if it's in a case or something like that. Do keep in mind that when the X570 Hero first came out, Ryzen 3000 was the main CPU from AMD, and that was of course superseded by Ryzen 5000. The only reason this may cause an issue, some very early motherboards that never got a BIOS update could potentially have an issue booting into Ryzen 5000. I remember when Ryzen 5000 first came out, I had to first update the BIOS on this X570 Hero, and of course, since the Dark Hero came out at a much later date, generally you should have out-of-the-box compatibility with Ryzen 5000. Now, the X570 Hero, the value proposition in 2022, one thing is clear, motherboards have been getting more and more expensive, and if you find this at the original MSRP, let's say of $379, compare that to the Z690 Hero, which is you know, DDR5, PCIe Generation 5. Because of these new technologies, the prices have, therefore, on the same models, increased a considerable amount. So in one way, it does make this particular motherboard a good value proposition, especially when you consider the CPUs have gone down in price. For example, the Ryzen 5950 X was for a very long time $750 or even more when it was really hard to get. Now, sometimes you can find it for as low as $500 to $550. And of course, same will hold true for the 5800X, 5900X, 5600X. All of the Ryzen 5000 have experienced a pretty nice drop in price, meaning that even though this motherboard is a little bit older, it's going to be able to have a very potent CPU for a fairly significant savings and discount when you consider the price of the motherboard 
motherboard as well as the cheaper CPUs that are available now. And judging by what's available with Z690 on Intel, you are going to be missing, of course, the next generation features like PCIe Generation 5, DDR5. But as we've mentioned, right now, those are really diminishing returns and there's not a huge impact with those type of technologies. Most likely, newer processors to come out as well probably will just have better multi-core performance and better gaming performance through having higher clock speeds, better IPC. Those things likely will all ring true. But at the end of the day, much like the Intel platform, those prices should be considerably more expensive than what you can get in X570 motherboard for now. So that certainly makes a pretty good argument for the X570 Hero as a decent value proposition considering all of the price decreases. All right, guys, so I hope you enjoyed this look at the X570 Hero as well as the Dark Hero. Let me know if you have any questions down below and remember to subscribe for more content like this.